same old song and dance. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, so what did I miss? Well, not much. It turns out that I've been gone for about a week on vacation, and tonight I can report that Joe Biden's still an angry, out-of-touch, blame-shifting, desperate man trying to resuscitate his moribund presidency. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. MAGA Republicans are to, to destroy an American democracy. And just like that, he declared war on, what, 74 million voters? Now, it's obvious that Dr. Jill and Joe Biden's handlers, they decided that the only way to avoid a rout in November and to kick to the curb uh, Joe Biden in 2024, which they want to avoid, was if he went into a total madman, you know, aura against MAGA. But the primetime speech was a tour de flop, a primal quack from a lame duck president. Democrat Senator Maggie Hassan, up for re-election in New Hampshire, knew it was a problem. She said, I think President Biden's comments just painted with way too broad a brush. Even the Washington Post poured cold water on it, and a White House official acknowledged that the administration made a conscious decision to include the Marines for symbolism. For some scholars who study civil military affairs, the use of the Marines as a backdrop to the speech was unwise, said the Post. Now, Biden's internal polling on this speech must have been really, really bad, because within, I think, about 18 hours or so, they tried to claim that he didn't mean every Trump voter. I want to be very clear up front. Not every Republican is a MAGA Republican. Not every Republican embraces that extreme ideology. But the extreme MAGA Republicans in Congress have chosen to go backwards, full of anger, violence, hate, and division. But together, we can and we must choose a different path. Nice try, but we got your message loud and clear, Joe. Because the only legitimate non-fascist Republicans are, for him, drumroll please, the outgoing Liz Cheney and maybe Adam Kinzinger. Well, if you're a regular Angle viewers, which you all should be by now, you were prepared for all of this. What was Biden's equivalent of a Hail Mary midterm pass? Remember, I think it was shortly after January 6th that we warned you that the Biden DOJ would use the riot as a pretext to just unleash a furious period of demonization, intimidation, and harassment against Trump supporters. Now, as jarring as the actions and images uh, were from yesterday, it appears that the incoming administration's response to all of that will be freedom crushing, from social media censorship to a punitive Justice Department. Oh, boy. We told you if they were worried about another Trump run for the White House, they were going to grow more desperate. They'd pull out all the stops to put Trump out of commission. It's beyond obvious. They're worried that Trump's not just going to run again, but that he's going to win again. And rather than take him on a on you know, court of ideas, they want to take him off the court altogether. Well, that was a week before the raid. Now, after the events of last week, every conservative working to thwart the radical Biden agenda, tonight I'm going to tell you this. You should assume that you could be surveilled and targeted by the Biden DOJ. Now, I wouldn't doubt for a moment that dossiers are now being built on hundreds, maybe even thousands, of influential conservatives in office or who are aspiring to run for office. After all, the president himself said that these types of people were threats, he said, to the very foundations of our republic. He said he's happy, though, to work with people that he considers inside the political mainstream. Now, a party obsessed with abortion on demand, pushing genital mutilation on children, is lecturing us on what's mainstream? Are you kidding me? Now, what the Democrats want to prosecute, though, goes far beyond Donald Trump. We've told you this as well. They want to use the full force of the federal government and force social media giants to hound and silence anyone who believes in America first, anyone who sees us threatened by open borders, anyone who wants to take a hard line on China, anyone who wants to defund the woke indoctrination of our public schools and our military, and any candidate who insists that civil servants stop acting like the servants of the DNC. 
all of you are threats. They cast their opponents as semi-fascists who threaten our entire democratic system. But we're supposed to believe that Democrats are going to run the next elections fairly? Or that they won't use every tool at their vast disposal, legal or not, to stop those semi-fascists? Now, when you leak details of a grand jury investigation to The New York Times in order to hurt Trump, that's cheating. When you get a copy of Trump's tax returns and then leak them to the press, that's cheating. When you abuse the process to the extent that a federal judge has to step in to slow things down, to preserve time-honored privileges, that is cheating. When you use social media giants as proxy censors to protect the president's son from scrutiny, that is cheating. These people are masters at cheating, at abusing government power to hold on to power. And you ever wonder, by the way, why we didn't find out who leaked that Supreme Court draft opinion overturning Roe? Huh. What they've done to Trump, they will do to anyone they think is a serious obstacle. They will help their new poodle, Liz Cheney, raise PAC money to stop Trump-like threats to democracy, meaning threats to their power. Yes, that means Ron DeSantis, that means Tom Cotton, Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley, Ron Johnson, Jim Jordan, J.D. Vance. You know what I'm saying. Look out, all of you. Even parents who attend school board meetings, they're threats to these megalomaniacs. The bottom line, if you voted for Trump and you plan to vote for him again or strongly supported key aspects of agenda and people who support that agenda, they will treat you as a potential domestic terrorist, a fascist, or a white supremacist. Or heck, maybe you'll qualify for the trifecta. In these days, it feels like we are not just at the brink of a civil war, but that one has already begun. Trump supporters are already speaking the language of violence. It's no longer Republicans versus Democrats. It's Americans versus MAGA. This hate-fueled agenda, this MAGA Republican agenda that we saw incite violence on our nation's capital has no place in a democracy. You can't exist. Of course, as they send poor Biden out to do his angry man routine, it's so pathetic. Democrats are the ones doing the real damage to America. Theirs is a relentless assault on our bedrock principles, on the idea of a politically blind justice system, on our national sovereignty, on parental rights and education, on our right to free speech. But of course, as the media obsesses on the phantom MAGA threats, the damage is piling up in Biden's policy wake, and it largely goes unreported. Since he signed his so-called Inflation Reduction Act, the stock market has plummeted more than 3,000 points. Now, it's a stock market, right? It goes up and down, yeah, sure. But it's also a sign that investors think we are in for a lot more economic pain. And the green revolutionaries in California we're all supposed to be emulating, they're on the verge of more blackouts. Biden friends in Europe, they're facing a cold winter and energy rationing because of their stupid policies. And then, of course, the war in Ukraine, that's not going well. Biden's sanctions on Russia, a huge failure. And Putin and Xi, they're now best buddies teaming up against us. Great job. But we're supposed to believe Biden's on a roll. Yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah, he's at 42 in the RCP average. That's a juggernaut, 42 percent. Wow. Does this look like an energized crowd gathered in Pennsylvania to see Joe? Look, um, uh, there's a whole lot of folks here. I'm, I don't want to keep you standing much longer. But... Yeah, <laughs> they're walking out, that's why. And Trump's rally looked a little bit different. From now until the midterms, I want you all to expect a nonstop barrage of bad news for Republicans and good news spin for Democrats. I want you to take it all with a very large grain of salt. The voter, voters are going to decide for themselves how things are going in America. How does it feel to their families under the leadership that they have right now in Congress? It's up to them. But just know this. This period of intimidation, recriminations, threats, having the military stand behind Biden like that, this isn't going to end unless we end it, unless they are defeated politically. We have to force them to change by changing our political leadership. And that's the angle.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.